the volcano of Mount St. Helens is awakening, how the volcano shook itself awake after an earthquake. This is uh, today's article. Express UK Callum Horror reports the Cascades volcanoes, Mount St. Helens. We saw that it had tremendous amounts of earthquake swarms uh, from uh, the Pacific Northwest seismic monitoring. We saw that it was about 30 quakes a month. So that's quite a lot. It was the most active volcano of that area. Mount St. Helens shook itself awake following a 4.1 magnitude earthquake below the volcano's north flank, which began the uh, shocking eruption process almost 40 years ago. The documentary reveals on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted in the state of Washington, and the event measured five on the volcanic Explucti explosivity index. Five, it's been declared the most disastrous in modern U.S. history. A huge column of volcanic material rose 80,000 feet into the air and deposited ash over 11 states and five Canadian provinces, and there were casualties there. It caused more than uh, about a, a billion dollars worth of damages. The volcano, which is an active stratovolcano, had not posed a threat since its last period of activity in the 1940s and 1950s. But it was revealed during Amazon's Prime, The Fire Below Us. It's a documentary on how a series of small earthquakes indicated that the magma had been moving once again underneath the volcano. Small earthquakes. And we have this. Uh, we saw this, of course, last year before the Kilauea eruption. We're seeing it again under Kilauea, and it could be that that's another sign of a, an imminent eruption there as well again. And, um, and we, of course, have the ongoing uh, small earthquakes under uh, Mount St. Helens today. So that documentary showed how a small series of earthquakes indicate that the magma is changing, moving in below the, area, the volcano. In 1995, the series showed that a siren song of Mount St. Helens began on March 20th. We're talking about um, the eruption of 1980 now, how it led up to that eruption. It shook itself awake with a magnitude 4.1 earthquake. For the next 29 years, the mountain continued to shake with hundreds of tremors. The frequency peaked on March 25th with 22 significant earthquakes in one eight-hour period. In response to the increasing threat, the Forest Service began evacuating personnel, establishing the first closure zones and warned residents of the dangers of earthquake-induced avalanches. The documentary revealed how the earthquakes became increasingly frequent and opened a second crater, adding that on March 27, an eruption of steam and ash opened a new crater on the mountaintop and Washington's backyard volcano made its news debut, it said. And they add, a few days later, a second larger crater formed right next to the first crater. Then the dreadful discovery that the north side of St. Helens has been deforming, uh, creating a 200 foot high bulge that was growing at an incredible rate of five feet a day. It was not until two months later on May 18th that any significant activity occurred. At 8.32 a.m. magnitude 5.1 earthquake, struck centered directly below the north slope and triggered that part of the volcano to slide approximately seven seconds after that shock took place. The landslide, the largest in recorded history, traveled at 110 to 155 miles an hour and moved across Spirit Lake's west arm. The landslide exposed the magma in St. Helens Neck to much lower pressure and uh, causing the gas charged partially molten rock, high pressure steam above it to erupt a few seconds after the landslide began. The resulting blast 
directed the pyroclastic flow or the P-flow of very hot volcanic gases, ash and pumice formed from this new lava while the pulverized old rock hugged the ground. So initially it was moving at 220 miles an hour but quickly accelerated to a huge 670 miles an hour. That's as fast as a jet airplane. Uh, pyroclastic flow material passed over the moving avalanche and spread outwards, devastating a total of 240 square miles of forest. The uh, huge uh, ash cloud because uh, of this eruption sent skyward from St. Helens north foot was visible throughout the whole of the surrounding areas. The near supersonic lateral blast loaded with volcanic ash and rocks caused devastation as far as 19 miles from the volcano. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.